Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah. Today I'm going to show you how to check a blood glucose using a glucometer. So let's get started. Whenever you check a blood glucose using a glucometer, you always want to make sure that you read the manufacturer's instructions because it really varies in how they want you to use the device. So first what you want to do is you want to perform hand hygiene and educate the patient about the procedure and have them wash their hands with warm soap and water. This will clean the hands and that warm water will help increase circulation so we can get a good blood sample. Then gather the supplies such as gloves, alcohol prep pad, glucometer, the lancing device and lancet, testing strips, and gauze. First what you want to do is you want to prep the lancing device. For this particular device what we're going to do first is twist off the cap of the device, then load the lancet into the device, then twist off the needle covering of the lancet to expose the needle, and just to help prevent sticking yourself with the needle use the one hand scoop technique to put the cap back on the device and then twist this into place. Next you want to adjust the puncture depth. With this particular lancing device we have a depth from 0 to 5. 0 to 1 is for soft delicate skin, 2 to 3 is for normal, and 4 to 5 is for calloused. So I'm going to put it in between 2 to 3. And then lastly you want to pull back the plunger on the device. This will spring load it and then set it aside until you're ready to use. Now let's prep the sample site and the meter. We're going to perform hand hygiene again and don clean gloves. Then we want to select a puncture sample site. The fingertips are most commonly used. However, check your device because some devices allow you to use the forearm or the palm of the hand. When you're using the fingertips, you want to go in at the lateral part of the fingertips, so the side. You want to avoid going in the center. And it is not recommended to massage or milk the finger prior to sticking it because it could hemolyze or dilute the sample with extra fluid, hence plasma, which could alter the glucose result. Once you've selected the site, you want to clean it with alcohol prep and let it dry completely. While the site dries, you can start prepping the meter. Confirm that the test strips that you're using are actually for that device and that they're not expired. Once a container of test strips are open, they are good for 90 days. Be sure to immediately close the cap back to prevent it from being exposed to light and air. For this device, I will insert the test strip. This will actually turn the device on and now it is ready for the sample. And I'm going to slightly lower the fingertip so it's below heart level. This will allow gravity to pull blood down into the fingertip so I can get a good sample. Now hold the lancing device firmly against the site, depress the button to activate the needle, and then remove the device. A blood drop should appear at the surface. Now to ensure that you get a good sample collected, you can lightly squeeze the puncture site, but do not do this with intense pressure. Now some meter devices may be specific in that they want you to wipe away the first drop of blood and use a second drop because it could contain disinfectant, or skin slash tissue from the puncture. However, many newer models do not require this and the device that I'm using does not require it. So we're going to use the first drop of blood. Take the test strip to the blood sample and touch the sample. The device will absorb the blood through the test strip. Once collected, set the device down and wait. This device reads in six seconds. As you're waiting for results, you want to hold firm pressure on that puncture site with some gauze until it quits bleeding. And patients who take anticoagulants may need longer pressure at this site. Here our patient's blood glucose is 99 milligrams per deciliter. We want to note this result for documentation purposes. Then we're going to discard the strip, uncap the lancing device, and use the safety button to eject the lancet. Dispose of this per your facility's protocol. Then clean the devices, doff gloves, and perform hand hygiene. And then educate the patient on the result. Now whenever you're interpreting results, you want to remember that according to the American Diabetes Association, for adults with diabetes that are not pregnant, these are the following blood glucose targets. Before a meal, the blood glucose should run anywhere between 80 to 130 milligrams per deciliter, or one to two hours after the beginning of a meal, it should be less than 180 milligrams per deciliter. 